Why did he walk like that? Dude, listen, listen, I worked out legs. My legs hurt so unbelievably bad. Like, I am penguin when walking around the house, so I'm not even kidding. This shit is tall. Say penguin again? Penguin. Why are you guys roasting the way I say penguin? Penguin. When listen, guys, guys, I'm stressed right now, so my... My ability to speak English has uh, deteriorized, okay? We are just not, we are just not human today. All right, let's hop into the coaching session, shall we? Yo. Hey. What's going on? Nothing much, how are you? Good, good. You ready to pop off? Uh, I don't know about that, but I'll try. <laughs> nah, you got it, you got it. Uh, before we start too, is like, what uh, what would you say you struggle with? Um, I would say the biggest thing is, is timings and what it wants. I, when I get into 1v1s, when I put myself into 1v1s, I usually do really good. Um, and I'm usually good about knowing when to peak and when not to peak. Mm -hmm. But I feel like in situations where it really matters, I'm bad at isolating 1v1s. Like I get either like I get too aggressive, like I overheat or I, I don't know. It's like I just can't isolate myself and I end up wide swinging or not necessarily wide swinging, but swinging two or three people. So I could I could hop into a, a custom after and explain. I, I think I already know what the problem is with it, but we'll see it in your in your gameplay too. Okay, great, great, good stuff. Okay, uh, all right, all right, all right. Uh, okay, so 130 ADR. Okay, you have a decent uh, amount of sample size for games to select. Okay, so Sova Jet KO. That's an yeah, interesting, it's... that's interesting. <laughs> I play with a lot of buddies a lot, and we all kind of just have this thing where we kind of swap roles frequently just to like uh i guess keep it interesting and okay. then when i don't play with them i feel like i get stuck with uh usually smokes at this rank um mm -hmm. and so I, I try and play like a duelist which is usually jet or phoenix um and then initiator which is usually ko or sofa yeah i mean the initiator side is good right like ko sova in general um i think the jet so the thing is when you're playing jet it's very different right in in uh in comparison to initiators like huge right. you have to play it's very aggressive you have to put yourself in off angles you have to um right. you can't rely on your utility uh and it could be a very big change of pace. And if you're not ready for it, you won't be able to fully bring out the potential that Jet might have. So what I usually do to recommend for people when they're climbing, especially when they're um, trying to learn the game um, or, or trying to get better and improve is just to kind of isolate agents, right? Like just lower your pool, lower it down to like two to three. Yeah, no, so yeah, I don't I don't Jet solo queue. If I solo right. queue, it's almost always Sova, KO, or you know, most of the time it's just Phil, whatever the team needs, which is almost always smokes at this rank. I would have like three agents, right? Like if you're playing smokes, right. isolate it down to like one smoker, right? Don't, I wouldn't play like, you know, Omen, uh, you know, and you know, you, you basically play like every agent, right? So just like, if yeah. you have that one smoke, right? Just play, just be like, okay, I'm going to lock in brimstone no matter what, right? Like the comfortability is like the biggest, biggest thing. Um, and right. I can't stress that enough because when you're more comfortable on an agent, you spend less time thinking about their utility, where you should be doing, what you should be doing on that agent. Uh, and then right. you can focus more on what the enemy's doing, how your team is playing, how do you play off of your team, how do you play off of enemies' ults, you know, these kind of things. What, what's their econ like? What's our econ like? These kind of things can, um, you ba basically just like empty up your brain and then you could fill that, fill it up with like more important stuff. Uh, 130 ADR or damage per round, I should say, uh, it's, it's a bit low, but it's not that bad. It, it could definitely be better. What I usually aim for is like 140, 140 to like 160 is really good right like if you get 160 adr uh damage per round i'm sorry uh is really good and kd is a bit low too you want uh, at least above one headshot percentage is good though it's it's definitely good it's especially you know all things considered that you're silver too i would say between like 20 to 30 is really good i think like radiant players have between like 25 and 30. um right. so like this is good uh which means maybe your crosshair placement is is somewhat good um, but okay, we can hop into to the game and see how you how you play it out. I feel like Phoenix is not the best, but I just feel like you said I feel really comfortable on him, and I don't think as much when I play him, and so I do okay. better. Oh, that's fine. So that's fine. I know uh, it's like really weird though, because I feel like everybody like when I play with my friends, they'll be like, "Dude, Phoenix, really? Like you could do so much better on other ages." So I was like, "But I couldn't." Like, <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Honestly, you could play Phoenix all the way up to you know at least the mortal. So. Uh, if not, I, I, I bet there's some like Phoenix one tricks out there that probably hit radiant, right? Like it's definitely right. doable. Um, main focus comfortability, right? That's the only thing I'm really worried about. 
Okay, cool. Crosshair placement is very high. Okay, good flash though. Uh, so I should have, I feel like I should have gone and not tried to run all the way back, but just tucked towards ropes. That could there. work too. That could have worked too. Yeah, because you heard the, the jet dash on you. So that, right. that you would have definitely been safe there. Um, you know, I like the flash idea and then pe peeking out. But um, sometimes like using util before you're peeking is usually really good, especially with your flashes. But sometimes right. throwing your util kind of gives out your position and it could bring you more harm than good, right? Like if they know where you are, like it, let's say that they don't know where you are and you just kind of hold an angle like an off angle and they kind of come out in your crosshair you can get that kill for free because they don't expect you but sometimes they could be looking towards screen or looking towards sight you throw your flash and they're like oh there's a guy ramp and then they just turn to ramp you know what i mean like they weren't even expecting you to be there um but i mean it is pretty common for people to be playing top ramp so Okay, crosshair place. Oh, I wonder what the sense is. Crosshair placement is uh, a little bit behind the movement. Well, <laughs> that was an eventful round right there. Okay, so um, a couple things there was like, you were watching for the top ramp push, okay? Uh, where, right. Remember when you were like wide, you were like really deep in the, like le all the way to your like left and you're watching? Here. Yeah. So careful yeah. with this because you're exposed from ropes and top ramp. Like if they come ropes, you have to flick your crosshair, you know? Right. Only be right. exposed by one angle and that should be the angle you're watching. That, that should be like a good rule of thumb always. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it was a good try. You were you, you kind of like uh, were in between the flash and you were still holding the angle. Um, you could also throw your molly down to stop any sort of pushes. And you can get like creative with it too, right? Like with Phoenix, like you can throw your molly down uh, at the top of the ramp and go on top of your molly, right? And then they won't expect a peak because they, they're like, oh, in their, in their mind, they're mollied off. And then they kind of just like ignore that angle, right? But if you throw the molly down and then flash on top of the molly, then maybe you can re-peak. Um, right. So, how you mentioned before about how you like to throw your flash and then kind of reposition, uh, it's good. And I would only do that if you were in like a situation where you needed to reposition and you were stuck. The whole purpose of, of Phoenix flashes is just to try and collect free kills, right? Like you, you want to try and abuse that. Okay, so so go a little bit to your left, okay. and you see the you can watch the cross into sight a little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah, so. Here oh. is like a really good angle, right? Because in your, I like holding these kind of angles, what's called an off angle, because if they're crossing from main, they're not gonna be looking up here. They're gonna be looking at sight and screens and stuff. Right, right. So you always wanna be positioning yourself in a way that you can kind of collect free kills like that. Paper bag, what's up? What about BF applications? Yeah, you could apply too. Everyone could apply. Okay, okay, good kill. That was a good instance of, of you, um, being in a 1v2, right? Like, exposed right. a little bit too much. Okay, the idea is to cross, but like, I would only cross if I don't hear anything, right? Like, always be thinking, like, in your mind, what am I hearing? If I hear nothing, then you might be able to, to get in that cheeky spot. It's not like a free, uh, free way to kind of cross into the site, or cr cross right. into that corner. Instead of like flashing and then falling off, what you could do is like what's called jiggle peeking, right? Like just kind of uh, getting close to the angle and looking back and forth, like like you're using your, yeah, exactly like that, like at the corner and just seeing what right. you see. And then if you see one person, you immediately just kind of fall back or maybe you just wait a little bit and then throw your flash. So just be careful how exposed you might be. Okay, I would probably leave my omen here. I would go towards ropes. Yeah, and just start walking. Yeah, walk it, walk it, walk it, walk it. That makes too much noise. Okay, spikes down B, go up the ropes and yeah, just try and um Okay, so movement is a bit ahead of the crosshair, right? Crosshair placement needs to be Okay, that was a good peek though. Yeah, I used to play on uh, like 0.7 cents, I think. 
I'm still getting in the habit of uh, like just aggressively doing this versus just picking up my mouse like every once in a while and moving it, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, I'm noticing that. I'm noticing that with your mouse movement. It's a uh, your your basically your crosshair placement and movement is a bit behind your movement. Yeah, jiggle for info. Yeah, perfect. Exactly like this. Yeah. Yeah. I'd probably rotate. Yep. Go towards ropes, maybe. Help your teammate mid. Yeah. How much does coaching cost? Eshmash point coaching for all the info you guys need. You want to rotate quick, right? Let your uh, sentinels or controllers be the ones who hard anchor sites, right? Um, okay. You want to be always on the move, always where the action is. The only problem with this is that you won't be able to ult from here, but right. this is a, this is a really good angle because you're watching like if they come up the ramp and if they're crossing into sight, it's like a two for one. Oh, a couple of mid. Nice job. Both back side. Two back right. Three, yeah, both back side. Hey, with Molly, yep. Okay. I think she dashed there. Okay. So the idea behind the ults, great, right? I really like that you wanted to pop your ult for the retake to try and get some info for your team. Yeah, was a, yeah. It was a little bit scary though from, from yeah. popping up in hell. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I, as soon as I did it, I was like, oh shit, probably shouldn't have done it right there. I should have just tucked, I was gonna, I should have tucked back uh, in heaven. heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're up, yeah. It's all good though. It's still good, yeah. it's still good, great oh, rounds. So oh my God, nice, look okay. at mercy. Hey, you got it, you got it. Okay, good molly. You have another flash. He's on the right side. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. Sometimes I'm clutching and I just whip an entire clip. Don't, I'll seriously, don't even worry about it. Uh, so one thing to note is like if your teammates like on site and you you can make it to that rotation where you can help him out before he's dead you want to prioritize that rather than trying to fight solo on a guy who's uh top ramp you know what i mean um right. so like what i would do like let's say you needed to cross into rafters to help your team out what you could do is throw a flash for top ramp and if somebody was holding that obviously they're flashed and they can't and it gives you time to cross into rafters to help your team out so you should okay. always be thinking like how do i help my team um, uh, as much as I can. I probably would not go here. The second I see Cypher here, I'm dipping. Oh, I'm leaving here. Right here? Uh, no, 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 like, go all the way in the corner, uh, behind you. Oh, yeah, right there. that one, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. I see, I see. Uh, so, the reason I was saying that was, like, if you have Cypher free, uh, and, you know, you're not pressured to, you always, always want to plant for, um, as many people as you possibly can, right? Um, right. Like if you guys had heaven control, I would have said I would have said the plan for heaven as well. You should always be thinking of like post plan situations. Um, so there, because you guys had sight for free, I would have 100 percent went in the corner, planted uh, for your guy main. Maybe somebody, maybe this guy rotates from mid up ropes to top ramp, and now he could play the bomb as well, right? You should always be thinking that. Like depending on default, should only be used if you are very highly pressured, right? Uh, that should be calm. Another thing too, what you could do is like, if you know where the Sentinel is playing, avoid that site. And it's like, as a good rule of thumb, just avoid, avoid the site with the Sentinel. If I know that Cypher was playing their pistol round, I'm going A, right? We're, we're all just grouping five. We're going A with our guns. Um, it, it's just so much easier, especially if Viper was playing there too. It was like a Viper Cypher. Um, that's like both of their strong uh, defenders with their util. Um, okay, so two, another thing uh, is when you're saving, it's it's almost like better to just not even buy light armor either. You can get away with okay. like a sheriff, but it's just kind of too much money invested on a save round, right? Um, realistically, okay. the armor won't even help you that much. If you're gonna save, you might as well just full save, right? Uh, unless you really have a lot of money and then you can go with the sheriff or like a frenzy or something start lurking i know this looks bad i know this looks bad because you're you're a duelist if my teammates don't follow me in they don't trade kills they don't they don't do their job and we're losing rounds grouped uh you can just kind of form 
form timings and, and do your own thing. Don't even listen to your team. Whatever they're saying, they're not right. So just walk. <laughs> I, I know, I already know they're saying some dumb shit. Just literally don't even, just... Don't peek yet. Just wait, just wait, just wait. Kind of hold this angle. All right, now start looking to walk up. All right, and go ropes. This is how you form a timing. All right, tell your team to chill. There's some in heaven. Yeah, get this kill on this flipper. And another one on the left. Nice. Let's see if she gets one. Go walk, 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 walk. Okay, good. I, I, it was a good idea. Sure. You want to walk a lot more. Whenever you're by yourself, you walk. But you saw how Im impactful that lurk was. Right. Um, it's, that's because you formed the timing there. The windows in this elo are very big because um, the lower the elo, the more gaps they have in their defense. You want to wait for your teammates to start making contact on A, start dying, shooting, whatever, and then you kind of look to kind of lurk. The windows are bigger than your forehead. <laughs> you should have a massive forehead. I got a big forehead for my big ass brain. Careful, going out. Nice. Really good angle. Yeah. I like that angle a lot towards the end there. You weren't too aggressive, and then you wait for the angle for when they have to swing out of heaven, right? And then they're not looking at you. Right. These are the angles you always want to take. Um, right. But let me hop into a, a custom game real quick. Uh, I'm not going to show you like every single angle for every single map, but I want to explain to you why, why this angle makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, and it right. just goes back to like, I mean, obviously you could probably put two and two together now, but it's like when they're coming up ramp, their head is right here, right? Their head is literally right here. Um, right. And when they're coming out of ramp, you they're not going to be looking at you. Like no one, I promise you, no one's going to be coming into a site like this. Very few people, uh, very high end players will do this only because they know about this angle. So you want to put yourself in situations where you get these kind of angle advantages. If you are going to plan on holding an angle, this was a really good one. I was scared you were gonna do this, right? And then the reason why this is bad is because they always do this, right? As they're coming up, they do this, they check this, they check that. After they right. check all of this, now they swing like this, right? And then they right. kind of, exactly. and when they're, when they're here is when you wanna catch them. So basically at the door. Right. Um, another right. instance here is like, you know, I saw you, you know, jiggling like this for info is really good because you can, you know, you see someone, let's say you see somebody, you wait a second or three seconds, whatever. And then you're like, all right, let's just see. You know, maybe I get a free kill. Maybe I don't. Um, this is another good angle. Okay. This is a really strong one. I love using this one. And you're going to get free kills uh, on split because of it. The reason for this is nobody comes around like this. Right. Because look, <laughs> they're fully exposed from screens. This is like a high priority angle. Um, so right. always be thinking, what's high priority? So how do they normally clear? Well, they clear like this. You know, they kind of clear something like this, like this. And then they clear screens. And as they're clearing screens you get this free kill this is another good one right this is another great one the reason for this one as they're coming out you know they do they do something like this this and now when they're here they're they have to check heaven like they can't right. not check heaven um right. and as they're checking heaven right you get you get this free kill 99 percent of the time when you're rotating um rotations always are silent right you should be silent unless like you're playing a and let's say you're here or something and then your team is like okay they're out b right now you would like knife out and hard rotate but like if okay. if you hear nothing let's say you're here you and your teammate you have a teammate in sight and you're jiggling you see nothing and you're like are they coming a i don't even know if they're coming a and some you're hearing some sounds on mid all right now you're gonna start walking you know you're walking this whole time you're not gonna be rotating something i noticed that you do right like you would do something like this right and then like right you're peaking the I'm angle slow. before your crosshair is there. So it's something like this, right? Okay, and I see what you're saying by that now. Okay, that makes sense. Your movement is ahead of the crosshair and you never, you always want like, if I'm peaking this angle, look where like my crosshair is already like there, right? My crosshair right. is already ready. So it's like in my mind, I already imagine that there's somebody at these angles. So in my mind, I imagine someone here. And then I imagine somebody here. And then I imagine somebody here. And I imagine five instances like this. You never want to peek an angle like this, right? This is how you peek into multiple people. 
uh, and this is okay. how you, you get into 1v5. So what you do to that isolate the 1v5, you do this. Slow, 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 slow. And another thing too is like, you can, without holding shift, you can take two to step, two to three steps without making a sound, right? Like right now, I'm not holding shift. I'm not holding shift during this entire time, but you see how fast I am right. compared to me holding shift. See the difference? And this yeah. is what's called quick peeking. You you take one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and it's like you're you're faster, you're quick. Another one, right? Like I would I would quick peek this, this, you know, this, this, this. Uh, these are very like scary angles. I would be like this. Quick peek, quick, quick peek this one, right? Um, because you never want to just walk in like this. Their their crosshair placement is gonna be something like, you know, like this, and they're they just one tap you because you walk into right. their crosshair. But when you go quick, you know, it's it catches them off guard and it gives you the the jump. Make sure that your your crosshair is ready for the angle you're about to peek and then worry about the movement around it. So it'd be like okay. this, this, and this is what's called slicing the pie. This entire area is the pie and you want to slice it up, right? Cut it up into many pieces. This is a piece, 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 and now this. Uh, okay, so sometimes you peek close to walls. Uh, most of the time, it's not the best. And the reason for this is like, let's say you wanted to do your little slicing the pie here of this. So how you do that is you'd isolate this, right? It's really hard, first of all, to have the control to do this isolation when you're this close. Um, and second of all, when you're looking here, because you're so close to the wall, they see you. Okay. But if you back up to the wall, and you're right here, you, we, see, we have the exact same view, right? This exact right. same view from here to here, exactly the same. Nothing has changed except your positioning. Nothing is exposed. Nothing okay. is exposed from this guy here anymore. Um, and it's all about like kind of, you know, having these advantages in your gunfights, not so much about your raw aim because there's people with insane raw aim, but they lack these like crucial fundamentals. Uh, that's a big thing um with this game that a lot of people you know take that don't take into consideration uh so i guess that's the end of my rants i think that was everything that i um saw at least from from the gameplay but um do you have do you have any questions at all yeah no i i think that uh there's a lot for me to work on and i'm, I'm excited i feel like i'm gonna Let's drastically go. improve as time goes on with just that uh you know yeah. massive piece of fundamental you have a really good mindset right like that's that's the that's the most important part and then on top of that you, you have good aim too like your aim was not bad um it just comes down to you weren't there were so many like spots where you were at a disadvantage dis disadvantage that it was hard to win that gunfight right like even right. if i was in that situation it would be hard for me to win that gunfight you know because it's like you're peeking close your crosshair isn't ready for the angle and they have already started shooting like there's a lot of aspects where they just start stacking up you know it's like um i always think of it like a percent a percentage um when it comes to gunfights like let's say i'm fighting this guy mid okay i'm peeking close to the wall well now it becomes like you know 40 60 in his favor because you're so close to the wall okay crosshair actually it's probably even more if i'm being realistic but it's fine um crosshair isn't ready for the angle now it's 30 70 okay um on top of that uh you know you hear multiple people um, you peek into two people. Now it's like 20, 80. Okay. Uh, and that's just to get one kill. Like you have a 20% chance of just even getting, and that's like the best case scenario. You get this kill and then you get traded because you wide swung into multiple people. people. Um, right. and just like that, it's like a percentage game. You're already like far down. Um, but if you were to just back up a bit, you know, and you just quick peek this right. Just like that. Now it becomes, and he's like holding this angle. Now it's like a 50, 50, maybe a little bit more in your favor because you quick peeked um and there's speakers advantage in this game so i would say like 55 you know 45 and just like that you have already corrected any sort of flaws that you had and now it's just aim versus aim right and it's just like okay who hits the shot better awesome thank you man i really appreciate you taking the time to do this that was a lot of fun and very very insightful and valuable for me so i really appreciate it yeah of course of course anytime awesome man yeah right. have a good one take man. care you too you too bye Don't explore. Yeah.